Welcome back friends. We are talking about different type of mass spec instrumentation. In this video we will be talking about uh, what is called TOF analyzer or TOF or time of flight analyzer. So let me write the full name time of flight. I uh, will be also telling you why it is called time of uh, flight analyzer because it depends on the time for the separation of charged particles. Now in this case it is also an analyzer. Remember we are talking about this one now. This is a part of the analyzer which is playing the important role of segregating or separating the mixture of charged particles. It could be the mixture of positive and negative as well as the mixture of large uh, mass to charge ratio as well as small mass to charge ratio molecule. Okay, So we need to separate. So that's the basic goal of analyzer. Now in this case of TOF or time of flight analyzer what we are doing we are again separating all those charged particles but it will be depending upon their again uh, the whole principle is depends upon simply based on time. So we, uh, we provide everything, we provide the mixture of charged particles and we simply stay there, we allow time for the separation of the process. Why? Let's imagine this case. So let me draw this structure again. So if this is the analyzer, let's say, so simply I am drawing this analyzer. Now somewhere here after the analyzer we are, we are having the detector and obviously somewhere here we are having so this is the source, the source region, right? So the molecules are uh, produced in this case. So let me it's the charged uh, components of molecule plus a molecule, say minus molecule. So let's say like that, small, or simply let's take a small, uh, simple single type molecules or the positive charge molecules only. So if I draw this large one. Small one, small one. So this is a mixture of molecules having different type of mass to charge ratio. Now in this case, this one, if it's a molecule number one, so let me numbering uh, this molecule. So one, this is two, three, four. So if this has the uh, numbering, so we can write here that uh, this first one is having highest mass to charge. Then the second one is having slightly less. So if I compare them using mass to charge ratio, then what we can write that the mass of this first one is greater than the two, then it is greater than three, then four. So you can see the fourth one is the is having the lowest mass to charge ratio. Now why this mass to charge ratio is important? Because remember in mass spec, what we can detect is uh, the presence of different molecules hitting the detector and obviously their mass to charge ratio. That's why we are detecting. Now why this mass of this particular case. So what we are comparing here, mass to charge ratio. Now among them, this mass uh, is playing a very very important role. Why? Because in all this analyzer, most of the analyzer, what we provide, we provide magnetic field or electric field. In this electric field, different charge behave differently. Now in this case we can see only one charge because this time of flight analyzer is not good for separation of multi charge. Okay. Usually it separates single or same type of charge single type of charge. That's why it is uh, most of the time this time of flight analyzer is used with MALDI because MALDI is also utilized for development of same type of charge uh, particles, right? Now in this case we are having similar type of charge molecules all together. Now in this case how to separate these molecules from each other? This large one, small one, how to solve? Because the detector cannot detect all these things when hit them uh, when all of these charged molecules hit the detector at once because some of them hitting fast some of them hitting slow then slow then slowest so we need to uh, pick one particular charged molecule at a time to hit the detector right so how can it be possible now this is very very basic why because again it's a mixture of large mass as well as less mass so higher mass to charge ratio means simply higher mass so those one here in this case the number one so which is having much more higher or greater mass. So if you are having greater mass, usually it takes longer time to reach the same distance. So now in all these cases, so let me write the distance is same. In all this case, distance is same, right? Both these cases. So if the distance is say, uh, let's say, what you can write? So let's say the distance is D. So D is the distance in this case. Okay, so let me write it here. Distance is denoted with D. Now the distance is same to all. Uh, so for all these charged particles, this is the same distance to be traveled, right? But among them, those one which is having the higher mass, those are which in the high, higher mass can travel. What we can say, it, they require more time to reach 
to finish the game and those one which is having low mass require less time to finish the game right so it is the finishing line small particles means they move very fast large particles means move slower but why if you try to find the basic of this principle so till that point that this is the actual process of this top analyzer so we simply place them no magnetic field i'm repeating repeating no mag magnetic field nothing is applied simply they are placed there like that and obviously there should be a flow and for this flow so that it, it will migrate toward this direction not the other direction there are some electrodes there are some what you can say negative positive charge electrodes say there are some positive charge electrodes should be placed uh, then uh, then slightly positive uh, and then negative negative like that so this kind of uh, charged molecules are placed there so that they migrate towards this particular direction so sorry sorry for that so it will be negative it should be double negative like that okay so this is how it actually works so we place some electrodes in such a way so that this positively charged particles will migrate towards this direction and obviously the whole process is placed over time so they are taking a flight using times so that's what they are called time of flight simply as after very after some time what we can see that the small particle smallest one move the farthest uh, then this one then this one then this one like that so they'll move in this orientation so here if i uh, put the number 1 2 3 and 4 depending upon their charge they will go and hit the detector right now if you try to follow why i am telling that that large particles will move slow uh, small particles may move, move fast so let me prove this fact to you now in in each cases so in in all this case if we consider one particular charged molecules in this particular analyzer and they are moving so definitely they are having some kinetic energy right so the kinetic energy normally how we calculate the kinetic energy we know the kinetic energy is denoted as half mv square right now in this case this kinetic energy if we apply some electric field in this case and the electric field is e right if the electric field is e and obviously uh, this uh, this 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 total distance of this tunnel if if i if i get this uh, distance and it, if this is s so this particular kinetic energy will be equal to charge z is the charge of a particular molecule obviously uh, e is the uh, electric field applied and obviously s is the distance in this case so it will be equals to z e s right so this is simply kinetic energy of kinetic energy of all these particles that are traveling this analyzer now what we can see from here we can simply uh derive some equation so 2 zes will be there then what we can make v so the value for v will be root of 2 zes by m right now this v is what we know this v is velocity right so v means velocity now what we are talking about here when you are talking about velocity how to derive the velocity velocity means the uh number of or the amount of distance traveled over time very simple so again velocity means the distance traveled in this case the distance traveled is d so if we, if i put d by time t right so here it is t denotes sorry t is denoting the time so if i put this formula now if we put this value of v to this formula so what we can get it from from there that we can get is that root of 2 z e s by m equals to d by t right now as we are getting this let 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 us make a square in both this place so what we'll be getting after making a square 2 z e s by m equals to d square by t square right from this point what we can get so let me draw here so from this point but we can say that let let me take this m at this particular side so m is there m d square equals to 2 z e s into t square right now let's put m here equals to 2 z e s divided by t square into t square 
simply aligning some sequence, simply just uh, solving this sequence. So what we get from here, m equals to, if I consider this particular part, 2zds by d square as k into t square, what we can tell that m, if this is a constant, I can write, so let me change the color. If this k is a constant in this case, so what we, I can write here is that m varies as t square. So what it is telling us that the mass of a particular charge varies the square of the time. So if you are having large mass, it will take more time to reach. So let me write that conclusion. Large mass, more time to reach and what you can say, uh, small mass, less time to reach. So, so in this case, we simply rely on basic physics and the kinetic energy of this particular charged molecules to separate them out simply depending upon time. That's what time of flight. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.